Hi there, everybody, and welcome to your weekly forecast. I'm going to get into it in just a second, but I wanted to say thank you to everyone who wished me well. I had a little bit of surgery uh, last week, I know, and you were all very, very sweet about um, sending me notes of well wishes and also checking in on me. So as you can tell, I'm looking and feeling a lot better, still have some recovery to go. Uh, I just got a deviated septum fixed, by the way. I definitely felt all of the wonderful prayers and great wishes of recovery that you all sent to me. Uh, being empathic, I actually think that helped me get into recovery much, much faster. I also wanted to give just a second of spotlight to this little guy. I'm here in the US, it's a National Puppy Day or National Dog Day. I really think every day is that if you have a furry friend and I wanted to encourage any of you that are thinking of getting a dog to take a look at rescues. This guy was a rescue and um, probably one of the best decisions I made as far as bringing love and light and healing energy into my life. Um, these are definitely souls and they are resplendent and they're here to help us. So if you have room and you have uh, a space in your life and in your heart, uh, really, really great addition to your life, okay? So thank, again, thank all of you for your healing energy. Thank this little guy as well. My family who has been very uh, helpful as well. So now let's get into, I know what all of you are waiting for, the weekly forecast. All right, now let's get into the forecast. This is for the week of August 28th. That's a Monday through a Sunday. And I split it into a few parts, as many of you know. I begin with channeled information, which we'll get to in just a second. Then I take a look at blessings and blocks, the higher and lower frequency energy for the week. Uh, then we take a look at the seven days of the week. And we finish off with sign-specific information that consists both of a channeled piece of information as well as uh, information coming from the tarot itself. All right, with all of that in mind, I would like to now look at your channeled information. As I was tuning into the opportunities that would be uh, existing as we are kind of going through this last bit of retrograde, uh, what really came through was this is a chance for you to release, but to release feelings. This is more about... Uh, the kind of karmic connection that you have to other people and also karma that you built in this life with people and the channeled information was the act of giving forgiveness and I wanted to emphasize that there's really a gift in forgiveness and it's not always that the other person's released it's more that you're releasing yourself so if you've ever thought I mean, I'm sure everybody's had a situation where you've been angry at someone. You feel, maybe you feel that they've uh, let you down, that they have betrayed you, that they've done something that is, you may even say, I'll never forgive you or this is unforgivable. But what happens when you do that is that you basically create this uh, etheric cord between you and that person and you are feeding them negativity. It's kind of like a corroded pipeline. And the two of you then have this lower frequency uh, pipe that goes back and forth. And you also give them power on some levels. You give them the power of your thoughts, your energy, and it can become a drain. And so it, forgiveness happens on a few levels. It, always, it, it isn't, doesn't always mean that you have to say, dear such and such, I forgive you, and that they have to accept. Uh, the first act of getting ready to forgive someone is simply to realize, perhaps, that they aren't worth the energy that you're putting into this, or that perhaps you haven't given them, or you haven't seen the situation from all sides, whatever it is, I want you first to just kind of take a look at something in your life. It could be yourself, it could be a person, it could be a situation that happened to you. And I want you to consider that maybe you'll just spend a day or a week or a month and try not to think about it. Because detachment's gonna be necessary for that act of forgiveness first. And then, once you've sort of given yourself a little bit of separation, see how you felt without that in your life and would you be okay not having that feeling or that vendetta or that connection to whatever it was um, because before you can recreate or allow for something new in your life you have to let go of these old personas these old masks so the act of forgiveness is actually a gift to yourself and it's of course it's a gift to others around you but really it's an act of freedom as well so uh Think about the, a, a person, a place, a thing, something in your life that you have felt that wronged me or that felt wrong or I'm angry that this happened and I don't want to let it go. Try. Try for a day. Try for an hour. Try for a little bit of time and see when you weren't focusing on that and maybe focusing on something else. Did it enrich or in, uh, give you more life or more energy? And if it did, maybe it's time to let go. Um, also, it's, I should say this. 
Forgiveness, when you're truly ready, is an unconditional act. It's not that I'll only forgive you if you say you're sorry or if you admit to this or no. You just, you let go. It, I, I mean, really, this should just be release. The word forgiveness is I'm, I'm letting go. I'm releasing myself. It's like the devil card. I'm letting go of the shackles. I'm going the other direction and moving on with life and allowing you to do the same. So think about it in different terms. It's not that you're, um, you're giving up. It's not that you're letting someone win. It's not that they're not understanding it. What you're really doing is giving yourself the gift of freedom. So I would love for all of us to be liberated and to be at a place where we're more powerful and self-empowered. I'm not talking about power in the terms of like politics and war. It's sort of like when you feel self-empowered, then you don't have the need to, uh, to push power around on other people. You just understand that you're okay and you don't have to prove anything. So uh, see forgiveness as the first step to self-empowerment, self-esteem, and also being energized and feeling like you have your life back and back on track, okay? So there was a lot to unpackage there, but I hope it made sense to you. And I hope that I gave you a different way to think of forgiveness, that it's the ultimate act of self-empowerment and that you always end up ahead of the game when you uh, let go of something. Okay, let's now take a look at blessings and blocks. And I'm going to use the same deck here. I have an animal oracle card here. Uh, and I think it'll be great for higher and lower frequency. So let's give it a great shuffle here. We'll start with higher frequency first. And this is the blessing. Blessing, of course, is what's going to give you the most opportunity to succeed and to get ahead and possibly, if you're ready to forgive, to allow for that forgiveness to take place. So we have the beautiful transformative swan here, which I love, also attached with water, which is saying that when you release your emotions, when you transform your emotions, um, what happens is you, you finally give yourself a chance to be who you always wanted to be. And maybe when you first look at uh, emotions, they may be ugly, but like a swan, uh, once you have a chance to make peace with them, understand them, see the depths of them, um, see past the illusion or past the reflection of your emotions, then you truly see something for what it is. And there may be more beauty in the situation than you first uh, realize. So this is asking you to see yourself in certain situations, emotional, uh, drama and trauma that might, ha might have happened in your life and see what your part was. See also your part in the successes in your life and other people's lives and see that you we're all connected and we're really bringing in uh, reflections of ourselves. So uh, I had a really great Reiki teacher who once told me when I had a, a difficult person, a difficult experience in my life, she reminded me that I called that in and she said there's a part of you that needed to work through that shadow element and once you understand that, once you release the fear from that, uh, then you can truly be free. And that was kind of what we were talking about earlier. So the blessing this week is to get in touch with your emotions, to see how your positive emotions can heal those around you, and to see how to avoid the negative emotions and not go back down certain paths that you might have in the past. So keeping emotions in check is going to be really good, and it's going to help you uh, across the board over the course of this week and the rest of the month, of course. Let's take a look at what you want to um, try to avoid this, this week. And your block is, we have the elk card here. And if you notice it, it is reversed. And whenever I see horns, it is a sort of sign of power. And we're looking at this card attached with earth, which is saying, I really want you to remain as grounded as possible. And if there's someone in your life that through an act of sort of like pushiness of power of kind of getting in your face and trying to push your buttons. What you want to do here is remember, is this, is this worth your energy? Is this worth your time? Why are they picking the fight? Is it because they're trying to impress other people? When you think of animals in the animal kingdom, sometimes it's a matter of showing off or um, trying to become the leader of the pack. But for this, what I'm saying, uh, or what I'm seeing here is to try to avoid power struggles this week. If there's somebody that wants to win and this is really not going to be any skin off your back, why not let them kind of have that pick and choose battles that are important for you? And definitely some of this is coming. You might have felt it around the eclipse. There's some events that are still happening maybe uh, as a result of that. But what I want you not to lose track of when we're looking at an eclipsed sun or an eclipsed moon is the light, the opportunity in the situation. So by letting one person sort of 
explore something, even if it isn't what you thought they should be doing. Uh, it's not about right versus wrong. It's about letting them go and not trying to control it. Then maybe focusing your energy on something else. Maybe they'll come back afterwards and realize that you were giving them sound advice, but um, they'll also realize that you had the, um, I guess, the, the confidence in yourself and also in them that they would be able to handle whatever it was that they're working through. So the blessing is to really be in touch with your emotions, to see the higher and lower frequencies of your emotions this week, and try to focus on loving, on helping, on brightening the energy um, in all of your emotional, uh, and, and I would also say etheric field. And when it comes to, this is gonna be about arguments and about physical drama in your life. You really wanna avoid getting in altercations. Not the week to do that, okay? Now let's take a look at the seven days of the week and I'm gonna grab a different deck for that. All right, let's give this a good shuffle and we'll do two rows. The first being the work week and then the weekend. Right, let's do this uh, card by card and day by day. As we're looking at Monday, we have the chariot reversed. The chariot reverse is, I think if there were any day here when uh, one of the issues of power could be coming through, we have the reversal of this elk card here, we have the reversal of the chariot, and when I was talking earlier about, uh, you know, people that might be pushy or trying to control you or, or might be trying to exert some sort of a power or power play, uh, this card rings really true with that, and that's what. Sh so I would say on Monday you want to avoid getting into those sorts of situations or putting yourself uh, in a position where you might have to challenge someone that you don't want to or don't need to. Uh, so this is really a choice of yours on Monday when it comes to more in work situations. It could definitely uh, be for some of you relationships as well, but I, I sense it more uh, has more to do with like work or responsibilities. Uh, I would say the other thing for just a very practical piece of advice, we are in retrograde, it's a good time for repairs. Um, the chariot's very symbolic of uh, like cars or airplanes or boats uh, and uh, any form of transportation. So if there's anything that you've been putting off a repair on, this is really a good time to take care of it. So maybe it's time to get your tires rotated or repaired or fixed. Uh, it might be a good time to, to fix something else that might be going wrong in any form of transportation, even a bike, whatever you're using. I really want you to focus on making sure that um, everything is looking good there. Finally, uh, this is about you feeling like you're in control of your life. Because when, when the chariot's reverse, when an empress is reverse or an emperor, it's, it's about taking stock and feeling like, is there a part of your health, your mental situation, your work situation, your love situation, where you feel like you're not allowed to be yourself or that you're constantly deferring uh, to somebody else to make a decision or that they just don't allow you uh, to kind of develop your own sense of independence. If that's the case, Monday's a day to reflect upon that, how you might want to change it. So putting down a blueprint of what am I gonna do for the next quarter of the year to, to make this situation better, to get myself out of this situation. Uh, Tuesday's a much lighter day and a much more opportunistic day. We have the Seven of Pentacles and for some of you, you may literally be reaping a reward of hard work that you've done over the past uh, few weeks or last couple of months. Seven of Pentacles for me is a card of repair, of uh, returning to a state of equilibrium, of very slow and steady financial recovery or growth. Uh, it can be kind of a conservative card when it comes to that, but it still shows me improvement. So if you've just decided to make some changes in your finances, it looks like they're for the better. And I want you to continue doing that, exploring similar uh, routes of recovery, investment, and, uh, and whatnot. So don't give up. You're doing very, very well when it comes to getting control and, and also getting an understanding of where you need to be financially. When it comes to health, the same thing is true here. Nothing happens overnight. Uh, you'll notice that this usually, uh, it shows someone almost picking the fruits of their labor or their efforts. And so when you think of a harvest, you really have to take care of something all year long. Uh, the harvest is the end result. It's not the beginning. And so what I see with this is a, is a general note to be patient, to be diligent, and to stay on track. 
Uh, but otherwise, I'm feeling like a lot of you are making a, turning a new leaf or taking more control over your life when it comes to good health, good finances, um, and a good state of mind because all of that balance when it comes to your resources um, comes from your head and your heart being balanced as well. So make sure that you're feeling good, that your life is, is in a place where you're happy and the finances usually follow. All right, let's take a look now at Wednesday. We have the Nine of Swords, which is really the universe saying to face your fears head on. A lot of times with Nine of Swords, you might be suffering from sleepless nights, from a great deal of worry or concern, or uh, feeling that you haven't, you haven't researched something enough. And so what you need to do is uh, basically stare head on whatever that fear is and start to take action to remedy it. So a lot of times I just mentioned research. It could be about doing a Google search online, trying to find out what other people have said, particularly if you're trying to make a decision about a large purchase. Uh, if you're not comfortable with someone who's representing you, whether it's a lawyer, a real estate agent, or some other uh, advocate on your behalf, this card is saying that you really need to have a heart-to-heart -heart with them so that they understand what your concerns are and so that they can fight for you or that they can at least uh, alleviate any of your fears that you might be having. And the other thing with this is it's about really taking care of yourself and getting enough sleep because stress has its own place. It's really... Uh, I should say it this way. Stress, I believe, is a reaction to stimulus that's going on around you. It's good to get nervous sometimes because it shows you that uh, you, you want something to go well. But when that goes to the point that it's actually um, taking away your energy or making you lose sleep or it feels like it's almost a disabling type mechanism in your life, then that's when you know it's no longer just butterflies in your stomach. It's actually something that you have to... Uh, take a look at. But what I like about Nine of Swords, if I could sum it up in a few words, it can be sleeplessness, it can be fear, it can be apprehensiveness, but all of these things can be either addressed or erased just by having um, a little bit of a break, talking to someone else, getting out of that cycle of, oh my goodness, it's going to go, you know, you, you kind of go down, down a, a, a never-ending cycle. So take a deep breath and uh, allow for your energy to, uh, to even out a bit, okay? Uh, as we look at Thursday, we have the Eight of Cups. What I'm seeing here is that this is a really good day to distance yourself from a project that you've been working very hard on, a person in your life that you might have been putting a lot of energy into relationship-wise, uh, and it's a day to take a break. So we've been talking about money, we've been talking about power situations, about stress. The day that I want you to try to sort of allow, f allow for relaxation is Thursday. So. For you, that might be about like watching something on TV that you, you haven't seen for a long time or reading a book or going outside. This, is, this card has a lot of water in it. So uh, if you can get close to the water, a stream, the ocean, a pool, or even if you can just treat yourself to uh, a late night bath, it's particularly I talk a lot about Epsom salt because not only is that a great way to relax your body, but the salt will also help clear out any sort of energy that might be holding you might be holding on to or you might have attracted over the course of the day or the week or the month. Um, so it's really good to do that as a spiritual cleansing. So I want you somehow to get closer to water, uh, maybe even incorporate some sort of a meditation with that. Uh, for those of you that might be on vacation or at the end of your vacation, I know in uh, North America here or America in particular, school's been starting uh, over the past several weeks and so it kind of depends where you're at but if you haven't taken your vacation and you have another week before school starts great even if you have uh, i want you to maybe plan something for the weekend so that you get a chance to uh, decompress a little bit so this can be the day that you plan uh, and for those of you that have a vacation day and you say you're either in a job or self-employed or retired um, just take a day trip this is a really good day to get out of the city or get out of the country depending on where you live and experience something different. It only has to be a couple hours away, but it's going to really clear your mind. So distance is your friend. The other thing whenever I see the Eight of Cups is it's a card of returns. And this is an unexpected return because the card was reversed. So this could be someone from your past that needs your help or needs your affection or might be looking uh, to you for an answer. And so this is a chance to hopefully resolve something and uh, fix that cycle because a lot of times when we're in a retrograde, we'll see situations come through that are presenting those cycles. In particular, before I uh, let go of the Eight of Cups card, 
This can also have to do with uh, love situations where it's on again, off again, on again, off again. The reversal of this is showing that it's possibly going in uh, a separation. So whenever I look at a breakup that happens on the Eight of Cups, uh, this has to do with someone who really has a hard time letting go. So that cycle that I just mentioned could also have to do with you expressing either a limit to how much you want to go in this back and forth sort of rubber band relationship or at least acknowledging that this may not be a healthy cycle. So overall, whether it's relationships, whether it's how you're treating yourself, your body, how other people are treating you, things are going to come back on Thursday. Something's going to need your attention and you have a chance to uh, put some limits down and let it go if you want to. Favorite day of the week, Friday, we have the magician. The magician reversed is encouraging you to, uh, to really look at everything on your priority list and see if you could ask for help for something. Uh, because I love the magician and the high priestess, but whenever I see particularly the magician reverse, it's about having one too many tasks and not being able to adequately put energy into them. And so you might have spread yourself too thin. Uh, and so whether that's resource-wise, like you're spending too much money or too much energy, or as far as your uh, obligations, and you said that you would do all of these things, but you realize, I really can't like do the carpool, do this, do that. Like You need to pick up the phone and talk to someone if that's the case, or at least acknowledge it and try to balance it as best as possible. Finally, just like if I was looking at the um, high priestess in reverse, and I saw that maybe she wasn't listening to her intuition, this would be about trusting your own skills and knowledge. Um, the magician's more, less intuitive. It's a little bit more for me about manifesting. So making sure that you're not getting in your own way of having something happen and then blaming other people. It can also be about not trusting yourself or not believing in yourself, which in essence cuts off your power because this is a great card. So I see Friday, I'm gonna look at the upright reading for the card and the reversal is just the caution to not basically doubt yourself and not overextend yourself. So the positive aspects of this card are saying, if you put your mind to something, you can absolutely get it done. It's a great day to be productive. What's important is that you understand what you need to do uh, in which order. So prioritization is key. So ask your boss, ask your mom, ask your partner, uh, ask yourself and just tune in and say, what is it that I really want to accomplish today? If you do that and then uh, think of everything else as icing on the cake, you're going to be A-OK. -okay. So let's look at the weekend now. As we look at Saturday, this is a chance for you to, hmm, whenever I see Five of Swords, I think of an opportunity to walk away from something, but walk away with a lesson learned and try to look at something uh, kind of rapid. When we look at this elk card here, I forgot to mention that this is sort of like the corona of the sun when we were looking at the eclipse a few weeks ago or a week ago. It seems like it's even longer. Um, this is about seeing, as I said, the silver lining to a situation. So if there was a breakup in your life, if someone did something and you're really upset that it happened, but now you feel like, wow, I, I know now how to deal with that person or they revealed something to you. The silver lining for whatever the disappointment that might kind of start off the day or you might be thinking about it from the, the work week now you have a chance to think well i'm better informed and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna harbor i'm not gonna kind of like pull this into me anymore and that really is about we were talking about your emotions and how you could heal how you could forgive i feel like for you saturday is the day for forgiveness forgive yourself forgive others and do something uh, beneficial in your life that's going to make you feel good about you your uh, current either job or relationship or whatever it is you're putting your energy into really focus on something positive five of swords is saying that you have to still you still have to do some work and you can't you can't look in the past you got to take away from whatever that situation was it i feel like it's a leftover from the work week it's probably from wednesday you're going to get a chance to resolve it on uh saturday and i'm saying that because we've got the nine of swords and it seems to lessen by the time the weekend hits you have a really nice sunday uh, and so this is a great way to end the weekly part of this reading, which is Nine of Cups, showing a chance for celebration, a chance for having fun with friends, with family, great time for dating if you're single, great time to be with your loved one if you're uh, partnered up with somebody. And also, it's just a very good time to celebrate the things that are going well in your life. I love Nine of Cups. 
And the only thing you want to watch out for with the Nine of Cups is just to exercise some moderation or temperance if I were to pull another tarot card here. But it's such a positive card and I'm really getting a good feeling for that. I would say have fun. And so if you didn't get a chance to take that break on Thursday and do something fun, this is the day of the week where I want Sunday to be equated with enjoyment, fun, uh, and really a chance to just let go. Okay? So all in all, a pretty good week. Let me summarize it now. I found that that's more effective than me doing it at the, at the end because I remember everything. So what we're looking at here is Monday being a day about paying attention to, to areas of control in your life and also deciding not to kind of tangle your horns with someone else, knowing when uh, and if something is worth fighting over, arguing over, or uh, basically having a, a war of wills. But uh, the other thing that we talked about was repair work, repair work on anything that is related to machinery or uh, transportation. So good time to do repairs on cars, boats, and any other sort of vehicle that you might have in your possession. When we look at Tuesday, it's a day of growth, a day of repair, a day of taking care of yourself. Also a chance to kind of congratulate yourself on the slow but steady improvement, or at least about taking control of your life. It looks like it's a good day for all things uh, regarding money and health. As we look at Wednesday, I want you to be easy and kind to yourself. It's a good day for self-forgiveness, forgiving yourself, uh, for asking for help, and for facing your fears. Take a break if you can on Thursday, and if you can't, then start to plan on that. You might also be faced with someone from your past, a ghost from your past, a lover from your past, or a cycle in your life, a friend, loved one, uh, or worker, a coworker that might constantly kind of pop up with the same situation. So again, it could be breaking up and getting back together. It could be someone who is always testing your limits, etc. You're going to know, but this will be the day for you to put up limits and, and speak out if there's something that's not making you happy. Friday, we're looking at a chance to manifest and not get in the way of yourself. On the weekend, letting Saturday be another day of forgiveness, of rest, of focusing on doing something productive, and then on Sunday, having some fun, relaxing. So now let's take a look at each of the 12 signs, and we'll start with channeled information and then look at supplementary information with the cards as well. So let's begin with Aries. Aries, your channeled information this week has to do with speaking the truth and also seeking out the truth. So if you've been in a point in your life where you're doubting those around you, maybe that they're not saying everything that they should, or that uh, even to yourself, sometimes the truth begins within. If, if there's a part of your life where you don't feel like you've been truthful and that you're uh, seeing something for what it truly is, then what I want you to do is try to kind of lift open the, the curtains or peel back the veneer so that you can at least understand what you're dealing with. So speak what's on your mind if you're in an audience that can deal with that. And even if you're not, you're probably going to be faced with some challenges where you're gonna to have to find a way to, to say something uncomfortable or, or speak the truth. And uh, remember that phrase that it really is a freeing thing. It will set you free, but also it's just a lot less work to, uh, to be honest. So be honest, seek the truth, and also be honest with yourself. Let's see if there's some additional information either on that thread or if there's something else that you need to focus on this week. Let's give it one more shuffle. There we go. And your supplemental card this week is the Tower in Reverse. And this is a card showing that for you, this is a week where there's a significant opportunity for change. Now, some of you may just be in a very unsettled state this week. This could be because you're just coming back from a vacation, you just moved, you might be starting something new like school or a job or a new life routine. Whatever it is, uh, I need you to try to find a way to, in to give it a chance. I think that's really what I'm seeing with this tower. All change can be difficult, uh, but once things have settled, then you can actually take a look and see if this is what you like, if it's going to be okay. Try not to allow the disruption that might be going on around you to cloud your head this week. So um, observe it, acknowledge it, but do what you can to try to find uh, moments of solace. And also, since this is a card that almost completely lacks grounding, and again, I, I mentioned earlier the, uh, the block for this week would be to really seek out more of that grounding in your life, uh, I want you to do that. 
So now let's uh, tune in for Taurus. Taurus, your channeled information this week is to focus on the core reason that you're in a, in a partnership. So this could be a friendship, a coworker relationship at work. It can also be family members, loved ones, etc. Uh, I want you to look at one of your closest relationships, whatever that would be for you, and uh, take a look at really what is the core of it? Is it because you're best friends? Is it because you balance one another out? Is it because that there was an assigned situation? Again, it could be work, it could be an assigned marriage, whatever it is, look at the core and see, is it still working? Or are we accomplishing what our original partnership goal was? And if, and if you're not, uh, if the answer is no to that, this week is going to give you a chance to redefine your shared goal and, and really try to work together. So if, if there's been a situation where you've been stressed out or you feel like you can't talk to someone, I want you to try to come at it from a different point of view this week and uh, remind them that you're in this together, that you want it to work because you, you both have a vested interest in uh, the partnerships at hand. So again, it doesn't have to be love. It can be work. It can be uh, a relationship that you, you have in your life, but it's going to be a strong one and it's going to be one that is uh, presenting some challenges this week. Now, if you are completely single or freelancing and you don't have these, then what the partnership message means is seek out an opportunity to strengthen for like a business, strengthen your brand. Uh, and as a person, there might be someone out there who could help you um, either get further along in your career or help you work on yourself. So it might be seeking out a mentor so that you can improve. But I see it being a good week to work with people and to uh, heal or to improve any sort of partnerships that are already existing that might be going through some rough times. Let's pull a card and see if there's any different information that's coming through for you or if there's a continuation on that theme as well. Actually, this bottom card came out. We have the world. And so the world is about moving on and, and also really going uh, for a wide point of view. So if, if you're in a point in your life where you feel like I'm ready to share something big, it could be a part of yourself, it could be a project that you've been working on, it could just be also uh, a point in your life where you're thinking, I want to uh, spread my wings as well. So what I'm seeing with this is either travel or distribution. So if you're a business or uh, someone who's created a project and you want to publish it or distribute it, this is a great week to look at those options. If you're someone who's ready to uh, share a new part of your life, maybe you want to announce a new job, an engagement, um, or just come out and tell something about yourself, your story, uh, this is a good week for that. The other thing is travel. Uh, if you're looking to broaden your horizons or do research across the globe, this is a good week for, um, for that kind of an outreach effort as well. So really great and strong message for you. And also an, an encouragement to, if you're feeling a little bit stuck or feeling a little bit stagnant in any part of your life, uh, to walk away from your current environment. It's also a good time to just change things up. The world is about getting out, seeing other people, exploring, and sometimes having your points of view challenged or enriched by other, um, other people's discussions or even constructive criticism. So hopefully that helped. Now let's take a look at Gemini. So Gemini, what I'm getting for you is that this is a week of focusing on uh, making a possibility a reality. And the way you do that is to focus very clearly on uh, vision work, manifestation work, uh, which requires that you know what you want and that you take at least one action in getting it further along uh, to completion or to fruition. So step one may be harder for some people. Uh, I want you to do some exercises this week, mental exercises. I'm thinking about, uh, you know, what is it that I want in this last part of the year? Before 2018 happens, I want to do this or this. Pick one thing that uh, you really want to see happen and then think of one way this week that you can start to make that happen. And if you do that, uh, because we're in retrograde and because this is something that maybe you've put on the side for a while, you're going to start to see some shifts happening in it. The second part of the channeled information for you, though, is not just that it's a possibility and a priority, but also that it's going to happen. You have to really 
connect to that feeling that um, I am, I can, I will. It's, it's positive affirmation. Don't get yourself into a habit of thinking like, oh, I wish I would have done this or if I'd only have done this. It doesn't matter. We're in a new, fresh, clean slate this week. So I just want you to think, whatever it is, state your truth. I want this. I'm making it happen by doing this. I feel the energy of that fruition happening. That's it. So um, really focus on believing in yourself and getting closer to that goal. Let's take a look at the cards and see if there's additional insights that want to make themselves seen here. And your supplementary information this week is about not giving too much energy or too much time to all of the people around you. I feel like uh, there's a lot of heart coming through with, with your particular message this week, which is you seem to love those uh, friends and family that are around you. Or there's, there's a core group that you really like to hang out with. Whoever this group is, uh, make sure that your energy and your affection is being reciprocated and don't be afraid to ask them for assistance because all of that beautiful work that you've done, whether it's volunteer work, whether it's uh, work in your own family or your own office, whatever it is, this is your chance to sort of raise your hand and say, you know, I'm having a, a rough week, I need, some, I need some time or, you know, I could use some help with this project or honey, could you help me with this, whatever it is, don't be afraid to ask there's a lot of people around you that are not afraid to do the same. So this is your chance to um, basically balance the scales a bit and make sure that you're being taken care of as well. So now let's move along to Cancer. Cancer, your channeled information this week is to focus on the feeling of independence. This could be quite literally you saying that you want to quit, that you want to break up. It can also be something more subtle where you just need a little bit of time to uh, maybe do something that your friends, your family don't understand. Uh, and this, a, a lot of times if you're in a big family, big corporation, or a big group of friends, it's difficult sometimes to be the, the one that is a dissenting voice or the one that wants to try something different. So sometimes that's standing up for your beliefs. Sometimes it's just following your heart and deciding that uh, you really need to make, make a change or, or make a break from the status quo or what everyone else is thinking. So I encourage you to um, act and think independently and to set up whatever sort of uh, safety net you need to to make that happen. Let's now look at the cards and see if there's additional information that wants to come through for you. Give it one more shuffle. Okay, Cancer, we have Temperance and it's reversed, which is reminding you that you can't make everybody happy. Uh, and what you need to do this week is try to pick what's most important to you to prioritize, but there might be something that doesn't make the list. And try though you may, and, and even though you're very adept at managing a lot of things, uh, this is a week where sometimes it's better to understand that there might be someone that you have to say no to, or that you have to uh, let know that, they, that you just can't, you can't deliver on something. So be honest and be realistic with expectations. And the more you kind of, communicate that in an early stage, the easier it's going to be, especially uh, finding a compromise. So um, be kind to yourself, stay balanced when it comes to your work and life balance if possible. And if there's something that you can bring up earlier than later, so much better to do that. And I think that ties in nicely with the channeled information, which was um, sometimes you have to step out and be seen and be heard even if no one else is doing it. So I see you also as the voice of reason this week and again, that's not always the easiest thing to, to be put in the place of, but in the long run, people will look at you and respect you because uh, not everyone has that courage to, to do something that's not popular. All right, so we'll look now at Leo. So Leo, I get a, a picture of you sort of like scraping away paint or looking beneath the surface. And uh, so when it comes to anything that has to do with contracts, um, any negotiations, anything where you hear something from a friend or someone that you love, but you know that there's more to the story. I want you to be a little bit of like Sherlock Holmes this week, an investigator. Don't be afraid to dig a little deeper. Uh, I'm not talking about snooping around or anything. I'm, I'm talking about asking someone a couple of times, like, are you sure? Or maybe we could talk about this more. I feel like there's more to discuss here. 
ask a few times. Sometimes it takes two or three times before the person is going to kind of break down and disclose what their uh, what their fears are or what what they're keeping from you. And I think it has to do with for for some situations a fear of disappointing you. And so be compassionate, be open minded, and most importantly, be inquisitive because you're going to find that there's more to the story. All right, let's take a look at the cards and see what additional information wants to present itself. All right, we have 10 of swords in reverse. Uh, definitely a warning here for you to take care of your physical body. Uh, this can come through when there's chronic pain, exhaustion, sometimes fatigue from not sleeping enough or not eating right. So I d first and foremost, take care of yourself. And if there's anything that has come to the surface that uh, you're afraid of or whatever, this is the time to ask for help. So definitely go to the doctor if anything like that happens. Or at the very least, you want to take care of the if it's just aches and pains, you want to make sure that you're getting a massage or, or somehow releasing that tension within your body. The other thing that happens with the Ten of Swords, um, it's a warning to try not to get in any sort of disputes or uh, legal kind of argument, not legal arguments, uh, legal cases. Uh, anytime that, that there's a possibility that you might have to kind of go up and defend yourself or um, attack someone or criticize someone, this week is probably not the best week for that. Um, Either it's going to end up where you're going to have to reveal something that's hurtful or it may not work out in your favor. So either way, I would try to uh, relax a little bit when it comes to negotiations, contracts, and any sort of confrontations. This isn't the week for that. Instead, take care of your body, take care of yourself, and, uh, and really focus on meditation would be a great thing this week, actually. Uh, getting a little out of your body, more into your mind, and more into a place of um, that quiet, that space, uh, and allowing yourself to just relax. So let's take a look now at Virgo. Uh, Virgo, the main thing that I'm picking up on you is that you want to sort of be cautious about spending too much time alone this week. There's definitely positive uh, aspects to having space. I talked about meditation for the previous sign, I believe, uh, but for you, I, I think it is important to say yes to some social engagements or yes to some business engagements where people want you to um, to go out and be seen. And even though sometimes that feels a little arduous or it might not be what you want, there could be some really great connections that you make and also you may have a good time as well. So I'm encouraging you to step, to step outside of your comfort zone, be a little bit more social this week and support people, especially if they're going through really positive life events. We all want people to cheer for us. We have to remember to cheer for them as well. And uh, let's now look at the cards and see if there's additional insights for your sign. Let me give it a nice shuffle. And we have the Ten of Wands. Ten of Wands is a great card for this week. Uh, for many of you, you're actually reaching that state where you, you're almost finished with a project or you're really getting ready to move on to something exciting in your life. Uh, this card reminds you to finish up, pay attention to all of the details, and then also when it's time uh, to simply let go and move on. Uh, so tens are all about completion and looking forward to what's coming uh, around the corner. Some of you might be looking at traveling, at moving, at expanding your horizons, perhaps going back to school. This is a card of getting ready to start an adventure, not necessarily doing it, but I see a lot of you wrapping up and uh, planting the seeds for the next big step. So this week uh, should give you more of that. And I just want to congratulate you and again, tell you for many of you to keep your eye on the prize. So if you're still going through the last few months of something needing to get done, or even if you're halfway through a degree, and this card can sometimes show like you're ready to finish, but you still have a lot of work to do. It's, it's saying stay focused, remember why you're doing that. And uh, if you can do something to let off a little bit of steam this week, that would be great. And I think that's part of the reason I was uh, encouraging you a bit for those social activities, uh, because sometimes you feel that weight of trying to, to, to do some sort of an accomplishment or uh, a goal and seeing what's uh, needing to be done versus what has been done uh, can, can kind of get you off track. Um, so have fun, relax, and have someone in your life remind you of all of the great strides that you've made to get where you are, okay? 
So let's take a look now at Libra. Libra, this, this week is actually a week of discovery. Uh, some people may discover new things about you. Maybe they underestimated you. Maybe they didn't really know you at all or didn't take the time to get to know you. So it can be discovering um, new gifts that you have to offer. And likewise, there could be a discovery of a person, place, or thing in your life that was unexpected. So uh, sort of a subtext of that channeled information is to remain open-minded, um, not to be too judgmental, and to explore and be a little bit playful with your, particularly when it comes to uh, your written correspondence for business. Uh, I'm not saying be inappropriate, but I want you to try to uh, find a way to connect with people more than just uh, business, business, business. There has to be something where you're making a personal connection, uh, and I think that'll make all the difference for discovering something that you have in common with someone, and that's going to help you uh, along the road maybe get something done. So um, be open to discoveries and, and don't be too close-minded, basically. Let's see what the cards have to show for this week as well. We have the Wheel of Fortune upright, great card. Some of you may have been having some challenges in the previous months with money or with trying to get something um, pushed through, either through an approval process or get noticed. What I see this week is some of that discomfort starting to shift and you're seeing progress. So either feeling like you're getting ahead or actually seeing some sort of a monetary or a, pro a productivity shift that is going to help ease some of that stress. So it's a really great card. Um, so uh, congratulations for those of you that are doing well or seeing that. And if you're not, one thing that I see with the Wheel of Fortune is that uh, in the months ahead, particularly around uh, September and October, which is really good for Librans anyway, uh, this is when your money situation is going to feel a lot more healthy. Now let's move along to Scorpio. Scorpio, your channeled information this week is uh, to focus on acquiring as much research, knowledge, and data as possible before making a decision, before, uh, before committing to something long term, you really want to make sure that you've looked at every possible avenue. Uh, not only is that going to make you feel a lot more comfortable when you make the decision or when you decide to move forward on, on something important, but uh, you might also discover an alternative that you wouldn't have if you hadn't done this research. For those of you that are feeling like you don't need to do that, this is also just about expanding your mind. So. Uh, doing reading just for fun, doing something that's challenging. I want you to try to work your mind. So that includes also, you know, playing games that work your mind, puzzles or uh, strategy games, even online games, uh, whatever it is. Uh, this is a week to sort of exercise your thinking skills, learn something new, or to research something that you really want to uh, to know more about before you make a decision. So good good week to learn. Let's see if the cards have additional information for your sign. So we have the strength card in reverse, which is telling you that uh, one, you wanna take care of your physical body this week. If there's any sort of weakness or pain that you're feeling, you want to make sure that that's being taken care of. It's a really good week to focus just on traditional strength training, on uh, traditional cardiovascular exercise. And the other thing that I see with this is, for me, the strength card has to do with uh, difficult people in your life, sometimes, or powerful or strong people in your life. The reversal of it's telling me that it's probably difficult though. This can be someone who has a tendency to come in and want to either micromanage or control your life. And uh, with the strength card reversed, what you have to do is to take back your control or to push back on that and basically cut the ties of codependency. Sometimes this can be a mother, sometimes this can be a lover, sometimes this can be a teacher. Whoever it is, they seem to, some, they seem to be kind of going over their boundaries a little bit or to not being allowing you to really be as strong as you can be. So I want you to find that inner strength and set limits this week, okay? Let's take a look at the next sign. Sagittarius, your channeled information this week is really simple, two words. I want you to slow down. Uh, this can be slowing down in how much you're trying to get done. 
and how fast you're moving just to take care of yourself and be careful. Uh, it can also just be about slowing down the speed with which you're thinking so that you don't miss something. I want you to be careful, thoughtful, and methodical this week. Uh, through that is great, great success can come to you. And I paused the video before I did this because I wanted to pull a card from another deck. Uh, for those of you that read with a Rider weight deck, um, if you ever take a look at the Nine of Pentacles, in the very corner there's a little tiny snail, um, and it's not going to be too much clearer than that, but you f if you get out your own Rider weight deck, look at Nine of Pentacles, or do a Google search online, you'll see this little snail, no one pays attention to it. Um, but what's interesting with this is, uh, you know, this is a card of financial success or feeling like you have a lot, that you're comfortable, that, you're, that you've achieved what you need, but sometimes people forget that it takes time. And so um, that's not your card for the week. I just wanted to pull a visual aid for your, um, your channeled information. Uh, what I'm seeing is that you're right on track. So you might feel a sense of impatience or anxiety over how far you're tracking on something. Your channeled information besides slow down is also that you're tracking well. Just keep at it um, and realize that it might take a little bit longer than you anticipated, but I don't want you to give up. Whatever it is that's important to you, whether it's finding someone that you love or working on a relationship that needs help or getting a business launched or finishing your degree because you're doing it you know, as you're working or whatever it is, something's taking longer, don't give up. Okay, now let's take a look at the cards and see if there's an additional bit of insight that comes through for you. This card wants to come out. All right, so we have the Four of Wands, and Four of Wands, even in its reversal state, is very, very good. This is showing that this week it's really good for you to connect with other people, and this is something I've seen as a trend across uh, many signs this week. Partnerships are strong. So uh, don't be afraid to lean on friends for assistance. Great week for romance, whether you're looking for love or you're already in love. Spend time with the people that you care about. Uh, this can also just include really close friends that you consider like family. Um, so that, that's it. With, uh, I would say one thing, since your channeled information was uh, slow down, I would also say don't get uh, too intense with your feelings with somebody this week. Take it easy, take it slow. Remember to ask how they're doing and um, that's going to also put you in a very good place. Capricorn, your channel of information this week is to limit distractions, to really focus and give your undivided attention to anything uh, that you're very passionate about and that you want to see come to fruition. Uh, not only is it going to help that happen, but also when it comes to relationships, you're, you're giving people an undivided uh, line to you is going to let them know that you care it's going to deepen the relationship and it's going to also bring the trust that you might either have been missing or trying to um, to develop with that person so don't be afraid to put your phone on mute to uh, cancel a meeting to come home early and turn off the TV and just be with your partner it's about turning down the noise really uh, the white noise this week uh, in all activities just give it your all if you're focusing on something mundane like try to get finished with it quickly, but while you're doing it, be completely engaged in that task. If you're talking on the phone, um, don't be looking up the stocks and don't be you know, chatting with someone else on IM. Really try to focus on one thing at a time as much as possible and see if giving things undivided attention, still managing a lot of things doesn't help you get through everything faster. It's gonna probably give you a boon in your productivity. All right, let's see if there's additional insights coming through from the cards. The other thing that's coming through, I have to stop. <laughs> um, the, my guides gave me one more piece of information, which was when you are listening to someone, uh, really let them know that you're listening. Uh, repeat back some of the things that they've said and add some insight to it. Don't just, I think that's kind of why I, was, I, I, I see some people being distracted and not listening. So really listen because uh, for some of you, there could be someone who needs help and they're trying to, to ask for help. There could also be someone that's trying to hint that they're interested in you or that they want to engage in a business partnership. You could miss a cue. I think that's the, my guides didn't want me to shuffle the cards and look until I got that across. So don't miss a cue. There's something really important that could come through and you're only going to get that if you're really, really listening. All right. We have the high priestess, which is to trust your intuition. Uh, and that's the other reason why it's important to focus 
just like with meditation, you can't do it half-hearted. You really have to put your heart and soul into it. So listen, trust your intuition. Great week for creativity, uh, for writing, and for being a person that can kind of sniff out the next best thing. So for those of you that are in like advertising, marketing, or some sort of a creative career for your living, uh, there, there's a chance that you could really hit on something that's going to resonate with consumers, clients, or accounts. So good week for creative people. And even if you're not, this is a great time for journaling, drawing, and uh, basically expressing yourself in any creative channel. Aquarius, your channeled information this week is uh, to really stand your ground. Now, this isn't about being stubborn. Um, this has more to do with sticking with a decision or with uh, something that means a lot to you, even if some other people in your life don't understand it. So uh, this could also have to do with the way that you wanna manage your health, your career, uh, anything that's really important to you. The important thing though for you to do first is to do the research necessary and to do the soul searching necessary. Come to that decision and then present the data in a way that isn't argumentative to someone else and say, I hear what you're saying, I actually researched it. I looked at this, I looked at this, I looked at this. After looking at all of the opportunities in front of me, I decided on this because of X, Y, Z. Um, so I want you to do your homework, do your research, and then don't be afraid to just basically state what your truth is or what your, your, your decision is. And, uh, and if you do it in, an, in a compassionate way and in a, in a way where you've you've shown that you've uh, basically understood all of the points of view, then people will have a hard time arguing with you. So don't be afraid to stand up for yourself. This is also about social issues in your life that you're passionate about, or any sort of dream that you want to chase after, even if other people don't understand why it's important to you. So uh, stay strong, stand tall, and do the preparation work, but after that, no one can stop you once you've made your mind up. Let's now look at the cards and see if there's additional insights, either on this or on other parts of your life. So we have the Queen of Pentacles in reverse, and uh, Queen of Pentacles is all about feeling at ease and at home with financial situations, and also feeling at home in the place that you live. And so there's a little bit of discomfort for some of you in one or both of these areas. So if there's things that you don't like about your living situation, maybe you don't like the wallpaper, maybe you don't like the couch, maybe um, the windows are old and you wanna replace them. This is a time where you can look at investing back in a house if you actually own it. If you're renting, it might be a time to look around or to talk to the landlord or something like that, or to do something simple to spruce up a room like you know, changing one piece of furniture or hanging a new picture or something like that. The other part of this is about getting a closer uh, hold and understanding of where you are financially speaking. So looking at long-term and short-term investments, taking a look at your debt um, and understanding what you have uh, left over and what, what you want to maybe create more of in your life. So once you've done that, the upright version of this card would basically say uh, to continue to hold on to that, to grow it, and uh, to feel that you're in a place where you're welcoming it in. So I would say that all still exists here but what you have to do first is educate yourself a little bit on uh, your finances. And finally, let's take a look now at Pisces. Pisces, your channeled information this week is unlike any other sign. I got a message for health and food. Um, I really want you to try to eat as fresh as possible. So um, staying away from processed foods, from, uh, from anything that's been canned, heavily salted, uh, lots of preservatives. It would be much better this week, really in, in life in general as well, but especially this week, uh, because I feel like it's going to clear your thought process, your energy, your body, it's like a detox. But uh, I want you to try to eat like whole foods. You know, if you're gonna, rather than having applesauce, eat the apple. Um, you know, rather than refried beans, make some fresh lentils. Uh, and so basically getting back to the core food groups and not having them being processed too much. Uh, and see how you feel. It's gonna be sort of an energetic cleansing for many of you. And if you can't do it with every meal, make some smart choices along the way so that you know, you're know you trying to take out some of, you know like no potato chips in other words. It would be much better to have a baked potato or something like that. So if you do this, what it's going to allow is for a clarification of mind, body, and spirit, and it will boost your intuition. 
So uh, try it if you will, let me know how it works for you. And at the very least, you know you're doing something smart for your body, but the positive side of this is that you're also going to be more perceptive because you're just cleaner inside and out. All right, let's see if there's additional insight here from the cards. Actually, a second card came through. So I rarely pull two, don't tell the other signs. Um, <laughs> but you've got two here. Um, and so what we have here uh, with the four of cups in reverse and then the six of wands upright is to realize that there's a hidden blessing coming through this week. And when I tuned into the blessing card, we have that swan card, which is saying, let go of your emotions. And if you ever look at the four of cups, it makes me laugh sometimes. This guy is, he needs a hug. Um, there, he's obviously upset at the way things have worked out because it didn't work out the way he thought. But there's a new opportunity on the horizon. He either needs to let go of what's in front of him uh, and, and look around a little bit. A lot of times this can also be a love situation, someone waiting for you. Um, you might have gotten out of a bad situation or you might have your heart set on someone else. Meanwhile, there's someone in the corner that has been pining away for you. So I want you to um, take a look around you and realize that it's, it's actually going to be okay. And that's really what the Six of Wands is saying, that you're being received very well by others. And that also, as far as long-term outlook and outcomes go, I feel like you're um, in a really good place. So that brings this weekly reading to a close. I just want to say thank you again for all of the uh, encouragement and well wishes while I was recovering. Uh, to that end, I am still a little bit under the weather and feeling a little bit of numbness in my nose. So I'm going to take it easy uh, as I'm doing the monthlies and they'll be a little bit shorter, but I'm going to try to get all the information and in. I just won't talk as much, uh, which may be a good thing. Uh, but in the meantime, I would love for you guys to stay in touch. So if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to this channel. There's two buttons there, one just to stay in touch on the main channel page. Um, but if you click on the little bell icon, you'll also get an email whenever I post a new video. Uh, I have a newsletter as well, so if you prefer that, you can sign up and there'll be a link in the description area below. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, so if you are in any of those networks and you'd like to connect, uh, I would love for you to do so. And finally, this is a, uh, a viewer-supported channel, so if you'd like to give a donation, uh, that's totally welcome and appreciated. In fact, I'm going to start to experiment a bit with uh, Patreon, I think I'm saying that correctly, and I'll, I'll put a video up about that later, but I will have a link here. And uh, I'll be doing some bonuses for um, people that decide to donate a, a fixed amount per month if you'd like. So again, more to come about that. I'll put some information in my newsletter. So sign up if you haven't already. Other than that, I just want to thank everybody for taking the time, the energy to work on yourselves every week, every day, every month. Uh, I'm glad I can be a part of that. And together we're making this place a better place. <laughs> and we need more light workers and more people that are awake. So. Keep, keep on waking up and keep on showing up here. That's all that really matters, okay? Take care of yourselves. Much love and light. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.